back. Well, let's discuss the Trans Mountain Impasse. Coming to us from a province where the Premier's kind of gone underground for the most part. But Andrew Weaver is the leader of the Green Party in British Columbia. His three-seat party currently holds the balance of power that's keeping that NDP government afloat. And he joins us from Victoria. Uh, Mr. Weaver, uh, I, I was going to ask you your reaction to the federal plan, but there really isn't much of a plan to react to, is there? Well, oh, that's the problem. The reaction is, huh? What did you just say? And then on we go, because nothing was really, uh, <laughs> there was nothing really said during the plan at all, the announcement at all. So I'm not sure why they called a press conference. Well, that's a good question. We're asking ourselves that one as well. But I assume <laughs> that you welcome the Kinder Morgan decision to at least stand down for the time being. And I wonder, what do you, do you think uh, BC, uh, yourselves, and the NDP government can withstand what is promised to be from the federal government, a pushing of that pipeline through and Alberta threatening all kinds of action. Do you, do you think you, you know, the prime minister's put a lot of his credibility on the line. He kind of needs to deliver a pipeline somehow. Do you, do you worry about what's coming at you? The, the problem here is that, we, like, I was an intervener in the National Energy Board process of this approval, and I can tell you right off the bat, the, 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 the rig was in from day one, and that, frankly, British Columbia felt that way all along. In fact, Mr. Trudeau felt that way, too, which is why he scrapped that previous process in favor of a new process that somehow now, even though he said he would, we're not going to put the, uh, the uh, Kinder Morgan pipeline through. You know, I, I, Mr. Mr. Trudeau is in a tough place, I get it, but, you know, I think you're going to starts to see some solidarity to BC from many other provinces, including Quebec. When Alberta responded the way it did with respect to the wine ban, the illegal wine ban, uh, Quebec uh, stood up and uh, a lot of people there were contacting us. You know, the reality is this. We know that if, if, if we really cared truly about jobs and the Canadian economy, what we'd be doing is, number one, ensuring that our refineries on the East Coast are supplied with Canadian oil, not Venezuelan heavy crude, not back in oil from the U.S., but Canadian oil. So why aren't we talking about an Energy East pipeline? Well, because it goes through Quebec. And that's a problem for Mr. Right. Trudeau, because Quebec doesn't want it. The second thing we should be talking about is why are we not actually selling people what they need? They need gasoline. They need jet fuel. Nobody needs diluted bitumen. It's shipping jobs offshore. It's lowest common denominator race for the bottom economics. And it, we're here in British Columbia saying we're not willing to take the risk that you are throwing on us because you don't wish to upgrade. You wish to actually ship a product that we're, we're, we can't clean up if, if and rather when it spills here in our waters. How black and white is this debate going to get? In other words, what I mean is how... If, if Premier Horgan softens his opposition to get this pipeline built, I assume you pull the rug out from underneath his government. Is that how black and white it's going to be for you? Yeah, we, the, the BC NDP and the BC Greens are united on this. This is simply not an issue of discussion between us because we know full well that Mr. Horgan campaigned in the election, as did we, on, on, on standing up for British Columbia and pointing out that this process was flawed and British Columbians don't want this. You know, a lot of people don't realize, again, we're not shipping oil. Nobody is talking about oil here. We're talking about diluted bitumen, a product, a substance that nobody needs. When you have people like David Black standing forth, standing up and saying, we don't want it here, let's refine it. I'm willing to put my own wealth on the line to do that. And you have the industry in Alberta essentially laugh at him or not take him seriously. We have a problem. British Columbia has been very clear all along. We do not want diluted bitumen increases in our coastal waters. And, and, and nobody I, seems to be listening. And I, I appreciate that. But you're, even your own B.C. Business Council says, you know, thwarting this pipeline will hurt the economy in British Columbia, destroy investor confidence in Canada. Aren't there ripple effects if this pipeline goes down? This, this is an incredible opportunity for British Columbia. In fact, the exact right message is being sent to the investment community. British Columbia wants to lead the world in the new economy, the economy of the 21st century. We want a value-added resource sector here. We want to bring our tech sector together with our resource sector. We recognize that jobs are not going to be a, a produced when you ship offshore. We want to bring a manufacturing sector here that's powered by clean energy. We want to bring Tesla here. We want to have a gigafactor here. We're saying in, in British Columbia that we want the new economy and we don't want to be dragged kicking and screaming back into the early 20th century by a government that's playing politics and not putting facts on the table. Prime Minister says this pipeline will be built, period. What do you say to him? 
Well, Mr. Trudeau, um, pff, uh, you, he could say, you know, well, what I will say to him is, your father right now is probably turning in his grave. And the reason why I would say that is we just have to go back to the 1980s and look at the ironic parallel between what happened then and what is happening now. When Alberta then and the onset and the beginning of the Reform Party stood up precisely because of what they perceived to be bullying and the national energy plan that Trudeau was bringing in. And the irony here is it's exactly the opposite. Now, Trudeau Jr. is trying to force on, on the will of British Columbians to simply look at the regulations of a product coming across its boundaries. And we have, a, we have him actually trying to force this on us. So I, I would say to Mr. Trudeau, take a look in the mirror and think about what you are actually doing, because you are actually uh, throwing British Columbia under the bus. This is not a, feder uh, a way a prime minister should approach it. This is, you need to approach it through consultation, collaboration, working together, not ramming something down our throats. Okay. A lot of emotion in this debate, though. Mr. Weaver, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Of course. It.